step on it and you break it, you're going to feel lighter. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. You don't have to go to the evil eye to feel peace. All you need to do is open up in prayer. And Jesus Christ, he'll come in and he'll show you his Holy Spirit. God, he'll protect you. Why go to a crystal? Did the crystal create you? God created you and he loves you. Jesus said in his word that he knows every single hair on your head. So Brenna, I'm here to tell you that by act of faith, if you smash it, that weight of, of depression and heaviness will go away. I guarantee you. The Lord rebukes you, Satan. Yo, yo, this is harassment. Raise your hand if you're a good person. Hold up, hold up. Hey, man. Come here real quick. I have a quick question. It's very important. Yeah, you. Come here real quick. This is very serious. What's your name? It's real It's real quick. We don't bite. We don't bite. This is real quick. Come on. What's your name? Your name's Brenna? I love you. Step over here. Step up here. What's your name? Where are you from? Connecticut. Connecticut. So I want to ask you a quick question. So where do you get that necklace from? The blue one? A crystal shop. A crystal shop. And I want to ask you this. Like, what, what's the purpose of that? Does it, like, heal you? Does it give you peace? Like, how do you feel with that on? It protects me from evil. It protects you from evil? What is it called? Evil eye. An evil eye, so you're you're telling me that an evil eye protects you from evil? Well I wanna tell you something that that God showed me. That the evil eye, right? The reason why it's called the evil eye is because it invokes evil. So when you put it on, you're attracting evil. I wanna ask you this. Brenna, Brenna, I wanna ask you this real quick. Do you believe in the spiritual realm? So, do you believe that the spiritual realm consists of good and evil? Of course. Of course. So, let's say there's a stranger knocking on your door, right? And he's potentially good or evil. Would you let him in your, into your house? So, the spiritual realm, right, is more realer than this realm. And let's say you open a door in the spiritual realm, just like how the evil eye is. Anything could come in. A person that, a, a demonic spirit, you know, a good spirit, but mostly demonic. Because if that door is open, then anything could come in, Brenna. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like, so what's the difference? You said that you wouldn't let a stranger, potentially good or evil, into your house. So what's the difference between putting on um, an evil eye, opening that door in the spiritual realm for demonic spirits to enter? I want to offer you this, Brenna, real quick, real quick. I'll give you $100 if you break it right now. If you break it right now, all your witchcraft, if you break it and you show me proof, I will cash at you $100. If you break it right now, but you have to throw every single crystal away and you have to send it on video. Because I, I love you and I, I love all of you guys and I want to see your soul saved. But I'm here to tell you that the evil eye is demonic. It will it will drag you down to hell. Step on it, step on it, it's witchcraft. The evil eye won't protect you. You see, the evil eye is evil for a reason because it invokes demons. You know, I guarantee you, if you throw it out and you step on it and you break it, you're gonna feel lighter. Because there's power in the name of Jesus. You don't have to go to the evil eye to feel peace. All you need to do is open up in prayer. And Jesus Christ, he'll come in and he'll show you his Holy Spirit. God, he'll protect you. Why go to a crystal? Did the crystal create you? 
God yeah. created you yeah. and he loves you. Yeah. Jesus said in his word that he knows every single hair on your head. Amen. So Brenna, I'm here to tell you that by act of faith, if you smash it, that weight of, of depression and heaviness will go away. I guarantee you. And if you send me a video destroying all your crystals, you, you can even look at my IG. I'm a YouTuber, I own a ministry. If you smash it, I'll, I'll send it a hundred, a hundred dollars. I'm a man of my word, I will. If you, if you send a video crashing, smashing all your crystals, because it's demonic, we rebuke that. Because it's demonic, if you smash it, I will cash at you. You're a Satanist? What, what does Satan do for you? Step up here, big man. If, if you're a Satanist, Satanist, set up. You, you know, Satanism is not about Satanism. We're, we're Satan himself. Jesus Christ. It's about your, like... You step up. Um, Satanism isn't about worshipping Satan. Uh, there are many Satanists that do worship Satan, but it's not a requirement. It's actually, it helps you get uh, legal rights. Like, you know, I, I assume you know, because it's been a very big thing on social media, that if you uh, say you're a Satanist, then you can get uh, an abortion in states where you're not really allowed to. So there are a lot of problems with that, and the, it's about the message of being true to yourself and spreading basically like, doing what you are. It's 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 basically Christianity without the parts that have been shown in the past as possible weapons. They have the potential to use the weapons to control people. Okay. What, what's your name, real quick? Lock, so I want to ask you this. Do you know the motto for the Satanic Church? Um, there's a few, but which one are you talking about? Have you heard of do what thy will? Yeah. So that's saying do what makes you happy. Do what you want. So let's say I was a Satanist, right? And I'm like, you know what? I want to just shoot up 20 people, right? Would you stand for that? No, but there are other codes that... But, but, but hold up. That's do what thy will, though. Do what makes you happy. Let's say it made me genuinely happy. Is that good to do what thy will? It, it's not, but there's you can't just pick one line out of uh, the you know all the different codes and try to say that that one line makes all Satanists bad. Because you could do the same thing for any religion. You could do the same thing for the Bible. I could pick out Bible verses and you would not be able to defend them without having to like bring up multiple other things. And that's what I'm trying to say. Like you can't just pull this one thing trying to be like Satanisms are bad because do what you want. But and I, I want to go kill somebody so I'm going to kill somebody. There's other codes saying sh that you shouldn't kill people. And if you do, then that's bad. It's not saying that it's good to kill people. It's just about knowing that you should do what you want. You should be able to do what you want. There shouldn't be anybody else telling you what you can and can't do. And that's, at the end of the day, it should be your decision. See, that's a contradiction. You're saying that, um, you're saying that, hold up, Caleb, Caleb. Oh, keep it coming. Um, you're saying, do what thy will, right? But you're saying that not all Satanists are bad. You see, I never said that you're bad. But if you're doing what makes you happy... Do what I will. You were trying to say that you could go kill 20 people. So that, that is in itself bad. So I'm just trying to prove that. Yeah, I'm saying that the motto is bad of do what I will. Because it, you're essentially opening doors to do what makes you happy. Do what makes you feel good. You see, Satan... The reason why there's one lie, one bad thing, is because the devil tells ten truths in one lie. He'll offer you everything that sounds good, but that one lie will destroy you because Satan, he wants to still kill and destroy. But Jesus Christ, he came that you may have life and life in abundance, man. I don't know what pain you're going through, but God, he wants to set you free. Do you have pain in your life, man? I mean, everyone has pain in their lives, but it's not like, I, I, I deal with it. I, I'm a happy guy. Do you want to stop dealing with it and face it and have it removed because I serve that God? That's not possible. There's no way you can just remove all pain from your life that's not in existence worth living. God said in his word that what is impossible with man is possible with him. You see, we might go through trials and tribulations, but when the God of this world, when, when the God of the heavens and the earth, not the God of this world, Satan, but the God and the kings of kings, Jesus Christ, came into my life two years ago when I was smoking weed, when I was on the verge of taking my life. He took away that pain, that pain that I thought was impossible. You see, these brothers right here, they all went through the same thing. We didn't grow up in the church. We were all in darkness, but God, he took away our pain. 
the pain that we thought was so heavy. I'm here to tell you that it is possible, man. My pain has nothing to do with God. It does because God, he allowed sin into this world. And that is why there's pain and death. You see, you were created as eternal beings. You weren't supposed to die. Us humans, we were created as eternal beings. But the reason why there's sickness, sin, and death is because of Satan. Satan, have you have you heard of the story of Adam and Eve where they bit from the apple and, and the serpent deceived them? That's who you follow. Yeah, well, I'm here to tell you that Satan, right, the part of the satanic church who, who deceives you guys, he, he created deception, sin, and death. He's a reason why you feel pain. So, according to the Bible, that's, that's how you see it. Yeah, according to the Word of God. But who's to say that that is truly the Word of God? Because, because because there's a translation, uh, the King James translation, I'm not sure exactly, but um, like Jesus and Lucifer have a, like, pretty much a fist fight. And that, that's like not in any other version of the Bible. So you could go through tons of different translations and find a lot of different things that just don't fit. And that's because nobody can tell me that with 100% with certainty that the Bible is the word of God. So there is, because the word of God says in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. You see, there is 500 people, more than 500 witnesses, that lived on this planet and saw Jesus Christ die and resurrect from the dead. 500 people. And that is why the testimony is so powerful till this day. That is why you always hear about Jesus Christ, because he really lived on this earth. It's not just a book, it's reality, man. And I'm here to tell you that Jesus, he came to set you free. The same miracles that you read in the Bible, he still does them today. If you want that freedom, man, open your heart to Jesus. You, you talk about miracles, but everybody experiences miracles whether they believe in God or not. So, I, I'm going to go back to what you were saying before about the witnesses for, um, for the, of God. Where are they now? Where are they now? So... Um, either they're in heaven or hell. Do you believe in heaven or hell? I believe that there is an afterlife, but I have no right to say what it is. I am ignorant. So if you were to die today, would you be okay with going to that place that you don't know? 100%. 100%. What if it was hellfire for eternity? Would you be okay with that? Where the word of God says that there's going to be weeping, wailing, and gnashing of teeth. Are you okay with going there for eternity? If I happen to be right. If you happen to be right and there is a hell, I don't believe I would be going there. Why? Do you think you're a good person? Yes. Have you done bad things? Everyone does bad things sometimes. I, you know, I'm not uh, an exception to that, but I feel that I always try to be good. I try to make up for what I did wrong. So, so if you've done bad things and you make up for what's wrong, then what makes you a good person if you've done bad things? The good that in the end happens. Okay, so it's by your works. So I'm gonna give you an analogy. Let's say you stand in a courtroom, right? And you committed a crime, whether it was murder or stealing, and, and the judge has you in the courtroom. And you're standing before the judge, and you say, judge, I believe you should let me go because I do, and I make up for my wrongs. Is the judge gonna let you go? No, because I hadn't made up for that wrong. But what I'm saying is like- But well, let's, let's say you help your brother with his homework. Is that making up for the wrong? You see, that's works. But I'm here to tell you that your works are as filthy rags to God. You're not a good person. I'm not a good person. They're not good people because we not all have person. done bad things. You see, we've, if I told you the worst thing I've done, you wouldn't look at me the same. But I'm here to tell you that there's redemption in Jesus Christ. Do you, do you want prayer for anything, man? Um, don't pray for me, but pray for... Uh, anyone else that is in need of help. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm gonna. He I'm here to tell you, bro, that we all need a savior. This life is hard. We can't go through it ourselves. And Jesus came to save you. God bless you, man. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold up.